welcome back to the Tiny Mike Strategy Lounge, our video segment where experts in the industry are interviewed on their tips, tricks, and advice on how to market successfully. If you know, you know, this episode will be a little bit different from our other episodes. Fran normally does her interviewing, but today I'm going to be interviewing her. Hi, I'm Carl. I'm the president of KMJ. So let's jump right in. I know Fran pretty well, but for those of you who don't know, Fran, can you tell us a little bit about how you became our marketing director? So I, I started here um, as Carl's assistant way back when, 10 years ago, I was still in school for graphic design. I'm just trying to find my way. And then from there, Carl decided he wanted to change KMJ from just a web design company to web design and marketing company. So as I was doing web design stuff and a lot of admin things and new business development going out and finding new customers. I also started to learn how to do SEO and read data and implement Google Analytics onto websites. Um, and from there, just continue to grow. Um, we started getting more data driven and more strategy driven. And then from there, moved from being the director, uh, I mean, being a digital strategist to now being the director of marketing, knowing the whole ecosystem from internal workflows to what needs to happen, um, what needs to happen when we first make contact with clients to the onboarding process and creating campaigns basically the whole ecosystem. That's how I got here, learning the whole ecosystem. Can you tell us what are some of the common challenges you face in your role for both the work you do for our company and for our clients? And tell us how you've overcome them. Dealing with internally, like my challenge is definitely um, setting expectations with clients because you have the clients who come to us who have been scorned and burned and they have trust issues, but they also know that they need the help and they need the work. So being able to speak to these people, set expectations and let them know that they're in good hands and also step up to the plate and deliver on those expectations. So that's been a huge challenge, um, especially in the beginning when I was just learning marketing and learning how to place code before any of the additional schooling came along and taking shots in the dark. Um, that was definitely a challenge, taking shots in the dark and standing confidently on the things that I had to learn on my own and didn't have clear answers from Google or other experts. Those were some huge challenges. Um, and then how have I gotten over those? Was that a question? How have I? Uh, yes, overcoming. Yes, yeah, setting the expectations. Setting expectations, I, that's probably the the biggest one, the easiest one to do. Setting some clear expectations and documenting that expectation because it's easy for a client to say, well, this is what you say and, or this is the, expect, the expectation that I had. But was that verbal? Was it written? Like have, words mean different things to different people. So me sitting here verbally expressing a process that someone could be listening to completely or not um, is one thing, but actually documenting that, like having it written out, the process, the phases, this is what's expected to happen, and this is how we need to move next. And if that doesn't happen, then these are the results that you should expect. So just really setting clear expectations and not just talking about them, but actually documenting and benchmarking. So that's how I feel like I've overcome those challenges. Tell us what your responsibilities are as our director of marketing. My duties as uh, the director of marketing. I usually start out my day just with some normal admin stuff, checking some emails, um, checking in on projects, seeing what the data looks like, um, and with the data, seeing what needs to happen. So if the data is looking a little wonky and we just launched some new um, content on their social or maybe made some SEO adjustments to the pages. I looked at the data, see if there's been any anomalies or any trends, and then make recommendations based on that to the client um, and distribute the work to the rest of the team. If it's a maintenance issue on the site, 
because the data is showing me some performance issues, then I'll go ahead and send that out to our project manager and she'll delegate that to who it needs to go to. If our client is requesting some updates to their social or don't like some images or something like that, then I will delegate that to our um, coordinator and then so on. So it's a lot of delegating, reviewing of project data and seeing what it looks like and then making recommendations from there. That's the beginning part of my day. And then more towards the end of the day, if I don't have events and stuff and go meeting people in the beginning, then I'll go out and meet people and network throughout the day, um, at night, try to make those connections to bring in more business. And a follow-up question to that is, how would you say your role differs from that of a data analyst? I mentioned a lot of reviewing the data in my day-to-day -day as the director of marketing. Because I am the same person, my two hats kind of take over in, in the same instance. So when I'm reviewing that data, which is the data analyst side of me, I am looking at the next steps and making the recommendations that the marketing side of me will have to implement. So the data analyst is the portion of me that is deciphering what this data means, why it means that, and what we can do with it. What are the actionable steps that we need to take with this data? And then the marketing analyst side of me is the portion that goes, okay, so this is what the data is saying. Now, these are this is the action plan. We need to deploy some landing pages. We need to deploy some ads. Uh, maybe we need to stop posting as consistently about a certain topic on social. So the marketing side turns that data into strategic tactics. Can you provide some insights into how that data analysis plays a role into crafting your marketing strategies? Okay, data and SEO is the foundation of what we do here at uh, KMJ. So without the, without the data, I don't have a clear view of what's working and what isn't working for in our ecosystem, in our content ecosystem. Looking at the data, sometimes we, we start these new things, like if you know, you know, it was a new thing, Tiny Mike is a new thing, but being able to gather the insight from the traffic and the viewers allows us to pivot. So where we were initially just creating videos, just speaking at the camera and giving you tips and tricks, we've changed and shifted the way that we are, we're giving information to our viewers now. It's no longer just me and Vanessa sitting in front of the camera based on what our engagement was like. Now we're moving around the office a little bit more. We've invited other guests on and we're seeing that we're getting more views on our videos because we're leveraging other people's audiences. We are getting more, um, more traffic consistently, like durations to our videos, because it's being leveraged not just on our platforms now, it's being leveraged on the other people that we're bringing on to, to um, engage with us. So now we're engaging not just all of our channels, we're engaging other people's channels. So having that data definitely has helped us pivot consistently. And if you guys need to know more about pivoting and making data-driven decisions, Go ahead and visit our website and check out our blogs for being data driven and also visit our YouTube page and subscribe to our If You Know You Know. Can you share some examples about how you've helped optimize our clients' uh, websites for better conversions or maybe you can share some success stories about uh, improvements you've made to the client's camp marketing campaigns? I think the first person that comes to mind as a success is one of our longest running clients, Jay Joseph. from. A Touch of Mystery and More. If you guys haven't already checked him out, you should go check out A Murder Mystery Show with Jay. But Jay is always looking to do something different. He's always looking to have a full-on campaign going. He's always uh, do-it-yourselfing, so to speak, on his site. Uh, but he's also actively involved with us. He comes and takes the time to have meetings with us to get what he wants achieved, basically. We started last year, he wanted to improve his rank for Murder Mystery Las Vegas and compete with a competitor. 
who was coming up all over Las Vegas for Murder Mystery and Murder Mystery Company, Murder Mystery Las Vegas. I conducted a free SEO audit, which was our offering at the time for Jay. We looked, I pretty much ripped through his site. We adjusted some of the content. We changed the key terms. We deployed some landing pages with additional key terms to start competing. And his visibility was increased by over 63%. Um, and he started to rank within the top five in less than 90 days for Murder Mystery Las Vegas after we we did the SEO audit and made the changes that were recommended. Um, the next client I am proud of would be our Reliable Banner client. He initially came to us for social media marketing. He needed someone to consistently post on his social and get his graphics out there. And then he had an emergency happen to where his site was down, it wasn't running properly, and he had all these um, maintenance issues and updates that needed to happen. He gave us a call, and within a few hours, we were able to get his site back up, get his maintenance issues resolved. We were able to get his social media marketing off and rolling, including the research and deploying within the first 30 days. Um, and then turned right around and he wanted to increase and improve his rank for keywords on Google. Uh, so with that, we've been, we conducted another SEO audit, looked at his data. We discovered a lot of broken links, a lot of links that are giving 404 issues, products that, is, that are outdated. So now we are in the phases of cleaning up the site, fixing all the performance and maintenance issues while also re seoing all of the pages making sure all the keywords are in line and we are at 90 days now but in that 90 days we have improved his visibility at least by two percent um two to three percent and he is now ranking for keywords that he wasn't ranking for before so we've we've had some amazing uh, success with the clients who actually come meet us in the middle and take the time to understand the expectations that are being established and not make up their own expectations. Okay, Fran, tell us a little bit about how you utilize data to uh, identify target audiences for our clients' marketing campaigns. I start by going into the Google Analytics platform, and then I go to the demographics, and I take a look at who's been currently browsing the website. And I also go a little deeper and filter that content and see what channel sources or medium they're coming from. If they're coming from social, if it's a referral from a different search engine that is in Google, um, if it's from Yelp, and then it'll allow us to break that demographic down a little bit further. If, it, if it's 50% women or 40 something percent men, if this person was browsing on a tablet, um, if it was browsing on Google or Safari or Edge. And based on those numbers, I can let our client know that, hey, this this is the demographic that is engaging with you. This is the demographic that's actually clicking and buying or coming back versus new and returning users. So I just go do a deep dive and see what those users look like. We can get really specific with demographics as well by using Google Tag Manager, and we can create um, audience segments based on what we're looking for. So if a use, if you are looking for, let's say you've already created your own target audience and you know exactly what your user looks like, you know where they work or what industry they're in, how much money they make, you can set those um, metrics up in your analytics data uh, and in your tag manager. And when someone hits your site matching those metrics, it will trigger and send that information to you. And you can also set up alerts for you to be triggered if a certain number of users matching that data hits your website as an anomaly. So there's a lot of different ways we can track down user demographic and make reports based on the data. For our small business viewers who have limited marketing budgets. What, or tell us how you can effectively use data to improve their marketing efforts. From your strategist, you need your strategist to tell you how to get from point A to point B. Break that down into your actionable items. And 
the action items, I feel like any individual can deploy themselves. It's just going to take time. It's, it takes the work. So that the action items go into the channels. Do you deploy a new email um, campaign and segment? Do you go out to your social channels based on the data and you create a whole new campaign and new ads? So based on what your data says and what your strategist is telling you to do as far as your actionable plans is is what you're going to do next. That's, that's what you're going to do next. You need, you need both of those people to make those decisions. Everything else you can deploy on your own. So when it comes to self-education, tell us a little bit about your preferred platforms, your channels for consuming new information. I am... When it comes to consuming education, man, I like to read. I'm a reader. I'll read all day, all night long. But if it is something that I just need the answer to really quick, I'll go to a video. I'll totally go to a self-help video. I'll ask Google, how do you do something really quick? But if I already know steps like one, two, three, and I just need a step in between, I'll skip through the video really quick to get down to the meat of what I need. Um, social media, my length of education there is industry research and client research. So I will, I will go and scope everybody under the sun on social to see what they're about when it comes to learning like that. Most of my learning though definitely came from just Google searching, searching Google and finding videos and articles videos and articles i'm gonna say if i have to choose to but i am i love every channel you have to use every channel to be successful and i'm not saying just go out there and use every channel just because it's there but doing the research finding the data to support that your clients are here on this channel this is the content that's going to get them moving and I'm able to find the content. I'm I'm somebody's audience. Somebody is producing the writing that I need and the videos that I need. And I'm like in heaven when I get an article that has a video attached to the article. Because now I can listen to the video play while I skim through the article and see if the information I'm really looking for is there. So yeah, reading and videos. So based on our experience in data-driven marketing strategies, do you have some advice for business owners or key decision makers in considering a hiring a marketing agency like ours? The best advice I can give them is to come open-mindedly. When you come looking for service and looking for help, go to that business with an open mind and the ability and willingness to work and change from things that happened in the past. There, I know it's hard to say, okay, like the past doesn't matter. It, I mean, it, it does matter. Like your past interactions with people and businesses and situations definitely skew what you know for the future and your interactions um, in the now. Though with that being said, as a business owner, you should always know the things that you need, even if you don't know how to do them yourself. Like find that person who you can trust and rely on. Like you're gonna have to heavily rely on trust. And if you can't trust the people that you're working with, whether they're your business partner and like your bestest friend, or they're just your web develop developer or your social media manager, these are people that you should trust like you trust your attorney and like you trust your banker because they're working on your business. Thank you, Carl, for being here and interviewing me today. Now, if you know, you know, we are now a podcast streaming on Buzzsprout. You can catch us and all of our links on social media. If you're subscribed to our newsletter, you can click up in there as well. And if not, then you need to go ahead and search us up KMJ on YouTube or on Buzzsprout. And if you know, you know, you should know. You need to be following us. Until next time.